But they want to speak a bit loud. They want to speak a bit loud. I can't talk very loud. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, so, so, it's, so it's pretty... It's yeah. pretty I mean, if you prefer, right, we can sit down and, and have a discussion. Uh, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, because it's... Come on, let's go. Like, it's all right? You want to sit down? Yeah, 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 why not? I want to speak to you guys. A lot of the time it's pretty vague in terms of, in terms of um, what they want to be saying. They say that the seven elements, mm. which are supposedly referring to the seven layers that we have, um, And like, like, circulate the water system and stuff like that. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Oh, he does. Listen, can you tell your people not to record, please? I'm begging you. I, can't, I, can't, I, can't, I, can't very I thought sure. you wanted to record it. No, it's because he's doing a religious project. That's uh -huh. all. He doesn't want to be on YouTube or anything. I mean, no, 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 I didn't say that. I didn't Are say you that. sure? I said it's. I said I don't want right, cameras. Fine. Just listen to him, yeah, man. So Leave him alone. I don't want <laughs> to so, so most, most of the time, most of the time, it's pretty vague in terms of uh, in terms of what they want to be saying. So like, like technically, the layers of the sky aren't really a heaven. Not really a heaven, are they? They're not. They're not. They're not really like the ozone layer, the, tra the stratosphere, the troposphere. They're not really. They're not really heavens. And even if they were, it's debatable that there's even seven. People say that there's five and that the ozone layer and there's another one that doesn't actually count. There's, there's a lot of things like that. Um, let's look at this today. There are more of them. They're, 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 like, if you, if you name a prophecy to me, most of them, anyways, are either vague, wrong, or debatable. Okay. Interesting point. I mean, in fact, I'm not, probably I agree with you. When it comes to people making claims yep. what are they actually uh, what are they actually claiming yeah 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 i mean if you look into what, what we're talking about as muslims allah is describing in the quran the natural phenomenon how he's created this universe he didn't describe it very well. um, we'll see whether he's described very well or not so when allah describes that he created the heavens and the earth mm -hmm. he created this you know different things within it and what's in between how he's provided the sustenance so these are descriptions of the natural phenomena Allah wants us to ponder for a reason. So that we reflect on this creation and come to the conclusion that this is a creation of God, the Almighty, the Most High, created for a particular reason and a purpose. And we fit in within the scheme of purpose and how our roles should be. Now, when you talk about how other religions say about these things and that sort of people, Look, seven layers of atmosphere is a forced interpretation to the text. Because which book says this is talking about atmosphere? None. None. Yep. So, what you, so, so what you are actually refuting, you're refuting a straw man argument, yes, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah? Exactly. yeah. That's my problem. Right. So if people claim that way, I will be with you saying actually it doesn't say that. Right? So when it comes to the Quran, when it comes to the Islamic description of things, there are things the Quran says, have you not known or seen? So that means people will come to know. People, either they know already or people will come to know about this natural phenomenon. Now, it's not a, something like, oh, you didn't know this before. There are things the Quran describes and says, you did not know this before, okay? Or you will soon come to know, like in one place Allah says, we shall soon show them our signs within the horizons and within themselves until they, it becomes clear to them this is the truth. Yeah? Other times the Quran says, look at this camel, look at mountain, look at this, look at that. Yeah. See how Allah originated the creation. So Allah is directing our attention to someone. So if you're going to really discuss about this scientific phenomena, you need to really leave away the straw mans from everyone else which is hard because yeah you, no no you no no no, no 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 and say let's deal with what it is so ask the question what is the well, are you saying you just, it literally when you're you saying, have a text yeah. the text the primary reading should be literal unless literal meaning cannot be applicable so sometimes you have to give the language the allowance to speak for itself in a figurative usage, in a metaphorical language, in a language which describes someone goes green in envy. Do they literally grow green? So you have to let the language speak for itself. Language has metaphors, language has similes, language has all of this, right? So we have to allow the language to understand the meaning when it has that meaning applied. When, when for example, say, um, 
one of the things Muslims also um, often will say, no, we have to take it literally and only literally. There's a place in the Quran, Allah says, the Jewish people say, Allah's hands are tied. And Allah says, no, his hands are outstretched. He provides, he's so generous, he's provide. Yeah, I'm just giving you a summary of this. The intended meaning is not that Allah is saying literally, you know, the literal, literally hands are tied. The, the meaning in context is to do with that he's generous or not. Allah says, no, his hands are outstretched and he provides, he's, he's, he's generous. So the literal meaning can be true, but the intended meaning is not actually this is talking about Allah's hands. It's talking about Allah and his generosity. Yeah. So likewise, when Allah talks about certain things, we need to know really when, when it says Allah created the heavens and the earth. Now, why are we going to say this is figurative? Actually, there was no creation. When Allah says he created Adam, why are we going to take it figuratively? Allah says, okay, I created Adam, I fashioned him, breathed into him the spirit, he became alive and so on. So there are people who take it figuratively because they have their ideological standpoint and say, I don't want to believe that because I don't believe Adam was created because I believe in evolution yeah. and there is no Adam. That's why people try to shift the meaning to figurative and vice versa, right? Something can happen. But we have a specific way of dealing with the text. But there's no way of changing that line to make it seem figurative. Like there's no way you can be like, he breathed life into him. There's no way you can do that. Yeah. People definitely don't do that. No, no, I, I so agree you with have, you. you There's a limit to where you can like say that. that. Yeah. You have to admit that he was created like that, which yeah. doesn't make sure. much sense. Sure. So now let's talk about when, when you talk about science. We were talking about science, scientific phenomena in the Quran, right? Yeah. When Allah says He created the seven heavens, what is your understanding that you think it's debatable, it's no vague, that, it's wrong? That, that doesn't like. I right. don't even know to start with that. One. Okay. Now let's 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 understand that. Is it wrong? Um, I mean, it's, 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 it's debatable. No, no, let's, 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 you've given I don't options. Know if it's wrong, like, Good. I don't know if heaven exists. No, so no, what is, what is heaven? Heavens exist. Like, what is heaven in that on description? Your, on what you think it no, no, what is heaven in this description? Yeah. Samawat, anything beyond this earth is sama. And samawat is the plural of sama. Yeah. Skies. Because yeah. people think heaven means paradise. No, we're talking about the earth yeah. and anything beyond the earth. The skies and celestial bodies, all of that. So when Allah says He created the skies, the earth and the skies, seven skies or seven heavens, when you say it's either wrong, debatable or vague, let's deal with that. Is it wrong? Um, seven skies? I don't know if it's wrong. So. How can you know it's not? You didn't even know how, how, how breadth of the first sky is. The first heaven is. So you know, you cannot say it's yeah, wrong. I didn't say it was wrong. No, no I'm saying, when it, I, I not you personally, said, not, not you personally. If somebody gives, categorizes, it falls in the, either of these three areas. Either it's vague or wrong or debatable. And didn't give an option saying it's astonishing, it's correct. Only leaving those aside. I mean, I mean, I said most. Remember I said most. Yeah. And I said most of the time it's one of the three. Yeah. And obviously... Could there be a description where it's correct? Probably. Could there be a description where it's astonishingly correct? Probably. Yeah, okay, so there's not only three, there's a few yeah, options. There's probably a few more, but to me it's one of three most yeah. of the time. Yeah, yeah. So, when it comes to the Qur'an, do you find that you find something difficult in the Qur'an that it describes of natural phenomena? I cannot read. speak for the Bible. You have to speak I to a Christian about that really, one. I haven't really read the Quran up until the start of some of them. And like I've, I've heard, I have a lot of Muslim friends in my school, mm -hmm. so they talk about some kind of stuff in there. But I'm really like some of the um, some of the stories. You know, some of the stories. I know. I know a lot. Of, there's a lot of Old Testament stuff in there. Mm -hmm. um, what do you mean? There are stories which are similar to what we find yeah, in, in the, the in the Old yeah, Testament. There's a lot yeah. of similar stuff in there. And sure. apparently, my friend said that. Um, my friend said that they believe in a lot of the old Bible, um, the Old Testament stuff, but some of it was corrupt, or something, and, uh, um, and that some of it's not actually true, and the and the Quran seeks to correct that. Which, I know, I, I, like obviously you can't, you don't know if they're wrong or not. You don't know when to begin knowing if they're wrong or not. They just you, you claim that some of the Old Testament stuff is wrong. You say it's true, 
there's a lot. There's, there's um, I think there's a, I think there's a Cain label for uh, recreation in there. Um, not, not, not in school, which I don't see how that, how, how that could happen because, you know, because say, because, because first of all, first of all, the creation is always a bit weird. Because you have, you have man being made from clay, or which the Quran can't even get right. They say one of them says it's clay, one of them says it's a, one of like one of them says it's a cloth, one of them says it's a different kind of thing. And there's, there's, there's definitely some contradiction in there. But Let's, let's, let's talk in about that. that. In that in let's that. talk about that one because you use the word contradiction. You, you seem to be quite confident that this is, is not quite correct. I mean, one of them says you were made from. One of them says you were made from a car, and one of them says you were made from clay, which can't be really true. Both of them can't be true at the same time. Okay, maybe you've misunderstood what it says. Right. So when it talks about the creation of man, the Quran often talks about the creation of the first man, Adam, yeah. or it talks about the creation of his progenies. How the progenies? So Allah says he began the creation of man from clay. So he's talking about the first man, not talking about you and me. Yeah. Okay. So you and I were not created from clay. Not necessarily clay. The Quran describes what type of clay it is, and from the quintessence, you know, the very extract, purified portion of that. Now, what is a clay? Human beings have made of. I mean, science hasn't come to a stage where we can understand that. We can only think and link that there is elements that we find in our body, or, you know, whether it's minerals, whether it's some proteins, you know, what would be things that constituents of and what you find the constituents within the, the earth and the clay, right? You can find similarities. But we haven't come can, to a point you where... You use that for everything else. You can say that man was made from a rock, you can say he was made from a tree rock or something. You can still use that argument being like, you find it in the earth, therefore he was created by it. Yeah, yeah. So, so you can use you, that for everything else. Yeah, whatever you use, the question is, when the Quran says about quintessence, you know, the, an extract purified portion of that substance, that man, the first man is made from. Now, you can't say scientifically it's wrong because the elements are actually there, present, yeah. okay? So, the question now arises, does the Quran contradict itself when it talks about, in various places, he was created from nothing, he was created from water, he's created from a clinging substance or a clot, as you say, he's created from um, um, uh, uh, the, the reproductive fluid of a human being, whether it's mani or nutfa, yeah? So, if you look at it, none of these are contradictory. When it comes to clay, it's referring to the first human being. Allah says, بَدَى خَلْقَ الْإِنسَانِ مِنْ طِينَ He began the creation of man from tin, which is the clay, from mud. Then he says, ثُمَّ جَعَلَ نَسْلَهُ مِنْ سُلَالَةٍ مِنْ مَاءٍ مَهِينَ there are various ayahs of the Quran like this, then he actually got his progenies from the, the fluid, despised fluid from there. Okay, so that's one thing. Other times Allah says, have you not heard when there was man was not even worthy of mention? Okay, there was then a time when man was not even not mentioned. Okay, as if like man was nothing. Okay, but that doesn't talk about Allah created from man from nothing. At one point man was in, not even in existence, then Allah created man. So it doesn't mean Allah created from nothing. When Allah says he created from a clinging substance or something that hangs or something that's like a congealed blood, okay, this is describing a process of a creation. At one point, man is created. When you look at a specific phase of human creation, there were a day 28, 21 to 28 days of the human embryo. It looks like a substance which looks like a leech, which is clinging. I mean, it isn't. It's more inside. It's more inside the thing, so you have. So you have, to, have you seen a leech? So you have, so you have the leech inside it. Hmm? The embryo is more inside it. Rather no, than I'm thing. talking about a specific from day 21 to 27. At that point, how does the embryo look like? You've got the embryo. I may have some pictures and the embryo, and I have the the embryo stalk, okay, that, the, that is connected to the embryo itself. How does it look like a leech? I'm saying the embryo looks like this leech and it functions like this leech. Even the internal anatomy looks like a leech. When you open it and you will see what we call the, the somites, they resemble like the teeth marks. It sucks, it actually clings to the mother's internal, uh, in, in, internal lining of the womb, sucks in nutrition. Yep. This is what the leeches does. It clings somewhere and sucks in the blood for its nutrition. So functionally and morphologically, the way it looks, yeah. looks like a leech. Now, you might say, oh, what's so special about it? 
but they may, may have known it. A day 21 embryo, which looks like this, functions like this, is not visible to the naked eye. So then you will say, ah, oh, that looks astonishing. So it's not vague, it's actually quite precise. It's a precise or a concise word choice. A, a word that describes the morphology and the function. I mean, the, the appearance and the function of something. Before that, it says he created from Nutva. A my problem is that does it specifically say day one to no, no, it, no, no. This is, it doesn't say day one twenty eight. When the Quran says he created human beings from a Nutva, then that, you know, a short description, the words or letters that are used of conjunction, which says a slow process or a fast process. Fa means quite fast, thumma means slower, and it goes to from Nutva to Alaka to Mudra to Idham to Laham, and then all this, you know, six or so steps of, of, of the process of creation, Khalqan min ba'di khalq, creation after creation, one after the other, how the one transform into one phase to another phase. And this is what we see when we learn about human embryology, that we see the transformation of this transforming and developing because it's constantly changing. It's not vague. It's, it's not specific at all. What's not specific enough? Um, um, there's no, there's no, I hate to be this specific, but I hate to claim so much about it. Because, because obviously, obviously there's a lot of religions out there. Hmm? And there's a lot of religions out there. And like, and like, Islam prides itself on its prediction ability. Not necessarily. It, it, it does. I've heard a lot of it. Predictability? I mean, maybe um, another Stroman argument. Islam um, is all no. to do with the, rel you know, some, some, what we call self-evident truth of his claim. Yeah. The claim of Islam, the primary claim you can say, is the, the linguistic um, evidence for the Quran that it is inimitable. Then you cannot imitate this Quran coming down or sent to a man who was unlettered, known among the people, and then bringing a revelation this literature, if you want to call it a religious literature, which is totally unparalleled, unmatched, that they cannot even match. They were masters in the Arabic language. Um, they used to hang the best poets, poem in the wall of the Kaaba. You know, they, this is a celebrated thing for them. And yet, when this unlettered person never learned any of this poetry or their ways of speaking, and then he brings this revelation and says, this is revelation from God, which they find it very eloquent, very meaningful, and then they're not able to imitate it which is challenging them. If you think it's not from God, this is what you have to do, bring a chapter like unto it. And they're unable to. So, do you mind, hang on, who am I going to give to answer? Brother, do you mind answering that? Yeah. Um, I hate to be that specific, but like for me to believe that as a really good prediction word from God or whatever, it has to be really, really specific. But that's, this is not prediction. I mean, like, no, I mean it has like it's not obviously it's not prediction. It's describing how things obviously always work. So if if you're saying that it comes from a cult that's connected and stuff like that, I mean for me to believe that as word of God inspired or something, you have to give me like some kind of accurate day count for when it transforms, not transforms, okay. transitions from clinging to being inside to developing to stuff like that. Like that would be a lot more useful. But like stuff like that, it's not really that specific in terms of like. They count because because obviously science does this pretty well, right? Science does this pretty well. They can they can they can use they can give temporal um, they can give temporal guidelines into where things will happen. They can give um, uh, specific specific uh, mechanisms for that when when that would happen. The car doesn't really do that, but obviously because it's, it's pretty old, they wouldn't have that information. That's why I'm saying. Uh, this is where I would disagree. Old. This is where I disagree. Let's take, take step by step. First thing you said about contradiction. That's what. You know, made me okay. Let's let's park on this thought and and and, and discuss this in, in more detail. When you talk about predictions, we'll come to predictions of the Quran. When you say this doesn't seem very appealing, it doesn't seem to be very detailed. I would disagree profoundly. Let's let's talk about the subjects. When the Quran says that He created human beings from both male and female, from a nutfa that is emitted, and He programmed 